can you tell me a little bit about maybe Dr. Murray and, and your encounters with Dr. Murray? And Dr. Murray was on the property five nights, at least five nights a week. And my understanding was he was, he was there all night to monitor Mr. Jackson. Uh, there was a couple occasions during my time of employment that I noticed Dr. Murray exiting the kitchen area through the side door to the driveway area carrying a couple of oxygen tanks. Uh, there was occasions where I noticed during my time of employment that in the security mobile unit that was located in the driveway in the back of the house area that there was a few oxygen tanks there as well. The oxygen tanks were waist high from my height. The upper top portion of the tanks were green, the latter part of the tanks were silver. Heavy duty tanks. You know, I had a cautious feeling inside, but, you know, by a doctor being there, you know, that kind of, you know, mm. passed by me. Yeah. How often would you say that you actually encountered Michael Jackson at his house? Whenever he felt like being seen or around the kitchen mm -hmm. or whenever he had dinner with the family, the kids. My first impression was he looked, he was very dressed up. He looked like the Michael Jackson that, you know, everyone sees on TV when he's in public. Uh, yes, he did look thin or slim. Um, he was talking very slowly uh, and he was moving very slowly. The first couple of days he was at a distance. Um, you know, the he had the surgical mask on, he had like this uh, shower cap or surgical cap, mm -hmm. you know, uh, bluish color. And, uh, but how would you describe him physically? Would you say that he was well prepared for an upcoming tour? Would you describe him as being frail? In, in the process. Uh, when I saw him, um, you could say he, uh, everything was in the process of, you know, in the making of. So, you know, that was my impression, mm -hmm. you know. Were you shocked by Michael Jackson's death? Was I, was I shocked? No. Because uh, even beforehand, during my time of employment, um, I had mentioned to close members of my family, like my mother and my sister, I expressed to them, I said, I, didn't, I don't think he's going to survive this concert tour. You know, and they said, why? And I said, because, you know, that's, that's too much stress and pressure on somebody like that. You know, it's like, you, it's one thing if you're doing it for the love of it. And it's another thing if you're doing it to get yourself out of debt. Initially, when I got the call from my uh, agent headhunter, uh, it was specifically mentioned to me that they wanted an African-American chef. Once I arrived at the property, I was instructed to drive around for about five minutes and then return. Once I got in, he apologized to me, and he mentioned that... Um, Mr. Joe Jackson had showed up at the property and he wasn't allowed to enter the property and he was very upset about it. Um, to that degree, they said, you know, he either shook the gate or hit the gate and um, I think when he left, he was frustrated about something. You know, they didn't tell me what the situation was. So where within the house did you have access? Uh, during my time in employment, um, I had access throughout the main kitchen area. I had access through the employees' quarters, which was a very nice area. Mm -hmm. um, that was it. Um, you would have to announce yourself when you entered the room as far as if the kids were there mm -hmm. or if Mr. Jackson was there. What was the tone, the ambiance like within the household? Uh, very peaceful. Very peaceful, very tranquil. You know, uh, there was music, uh, music by Dionne Warwick or some other uh, uh, major artist or just instrumental music, you know, maybe from soundtracks of movies, uh, you know, westerns like The Magnificent Seven, you know, that type of thing. Now, was there an original recipe that the kids were especially fond of, or perhaps even Michael Jackson himself? I served the family um, Asian influence. I served them uh, on one occasion uh, combination French influence combined with upscale. So it was different variations of different things. From my interactions with the kids, um, they seemed to be very intelligent, very intellectual kids. 
uh, very advanced for their age. You know, there there were times when you know they would act like kids, and have a good time, have fun. You know, and then you know they would flip at a moment notice, and when they wanted to inform you about something or instruct you about something, they would act like adults. And you know they were very straightforward about it, but at the same time, uh, very polite. They would always say thank you, yes, please. There was a lot of feedback and instructions I would get from Prince uh, concerning uh, when Mr. Jackson wanted to eat or when Mr. Jackson uh, felt it was comfortable for the kids to eat. Uh, Prince was pretty much like a go-between between Mr. Jackson mm -hmm. and you know myself mm -hmm. and even security. You know, okay. uh, if there's something that you know, they need it, you know, they would go to security and tell them what they needed, you know. Um, it was mentioned on a couple occasions that um, certain people felt that um, the reason certain staff members were no longer there were um, possibly because of the kids. Um, you know, if they didn't like it, uh, if they didn't like an individual or if they felt uncomfortable with an individual, um, you know, the word would get back to Mr. Jackson, and next thing you know, they were looking for someone else. Mr. Jackson usually ate dinner with his kids as often as possible. If for some reason Mr. Jackson was late getting back home from his daily agendas, uh, the kids would insist to wait as long as possible until he returned. Uh, uh, if it ran over a certain period, uh, Mr. Jackson would phone the kids and tell them to go ahead and have dinner without him. The times when Mr. Jackson um, did not have dinner uh, with the kids or he couldn't get back in time to have dinner with the kids, the youngest blanket would always sit at the head of the table uh, where Mr. Jackson would normally sit. And that was fine with Prince and that was fine with Paris. They never made any qualms or anything about it. I mean, he was the youngest. On one occasion, um, it was in the morning uh, when my shift had just started. I arrived, uh, I had got dressed, and um, um, as I was getting dressed, Prince knocked on the employee's quarters door, and he uh, asked me if I saw uh, their bird uh, in that area or the kitchen area to let him know because the bird was missing. And this is a very nice story, sad story also, but uh, I was asked to help them find the bird uh, because uh, uh, the bird wind up missing in Paris' room while she was sleeping. And um, from, from their understanding, the cat, one of the cats knocked over the cage. Okay, so um, I proceeded to look throughout the kitchen and the employees' areas, the dry storage areas. Um, okay, I noticed that there were some feathers on the kitchen floor, and at that point, Paris had came back up to the kitchen, and I, I uh, said to Paris, I said, you know, this may not be true, but um, uh, if you, you see these feathers down here, I said, I, I believe the cat got the bird. And she got upset at that point and she said, well, that's not true because where's the blood, you know? And I said, there doesn't necessarily have to be any blood if the cat just grabbed the bird. And then maybe 10 to 15 minutes later, Mr. Jackson and Prince uh, uh, and Blanket, they came back up into the kitchen area and Mr. Jackson had told me that they had found the bird down in the movie theater and the cat had ripped the bird up and, um, Mr. Jackson thanked me, you know, and the nanny for looking around on the upper level for the bird. And then um, the, the kids were very upset. You know, they were crying at that point. Uh, Prince proceeded to go into the backyard area, and he had like a small hand shovel. And I believe he buried the bird in the backyard area. And, you know, they were so upset, they didn't even want to have lunch. So they skipped lunch, and it was like they were in mourning that whole afternoon.